Officially, the Kremlin says that the war is going to plan. Динамика положительная. Все развивается в рамках плана Министерства обороны, Генерального штаба. I'm not sure anybody else really believes that. And in Russia, I think it's now become acknowledged that this is a tougher proposition than they imagined back in February. But in theory, although the acknowledgement is that mistakes have been made, there is no way the Russians think they will not prevail because they're Russia, they're a big power, they've got a 144 million population, a big economy. Therefore, once they put their minds to it, they will prevail. And the justifications for that you know, come and go as, as the months go on. They genuinely seem to believe that Russia is a great power, that it has not been accorded the respect that it was due, that the United States is due to be taken down, and that NATO has got to be shown where the boundaries are. And so underlying any doubts about this conflict within the broader Russian population, there does seem to be a, a sense that this is, it's about time that Russia asserted itself and that the world took some notice. Now, I suspect that that opinion is rather brittle and that failure on the Kremlin's part would quickly translate into a disillusionment. But until the Kremlin, or unless the Kremlin, absolutely fails in, in Ukraine, that sense that, that Russia has a right to pursue this operation, to assert itself in Europe, I think goes very deep into the Russian popular psychology. Ukraine didn't fall. Ukraine is alive and kicking. For the Ukrainians, this is a war of national survival, simple as that. There was an, an, an idea before the war started that because, you know, between 30 and 40 percent of Ukrainians spoke Russian, uh, President Zelensky, his first language is Russian. There was a sort of belief in some parts of the world, and certainly in Russia, that the Ukrainians would welcome the Russians in, accept the Russians in, um, and that Ukraine actually would adjust quite quickly to effectively a Russian takeover. That hasn't been true at all. And one of the things that has been most interesting about this whole conflict in the, in the last year is how completely patriotic the vast, vast majority of Ukrainians are. That has actually given Ukraine a sense of nationhood that it has not possessed for well over 100 years. And that sense of nationhood, I think, will propel it to be a, a different sort of state after this war. The new Ukraine that emerges from this war, I think, will be thoroughly European, will be absolutely westward leaning, and it knows it will have to live with a, a hostile Russia for the next century or more. But it's more than prepared to do that because of this discovery, this feeling that they have, that they now have real nationhood, nationality and identity. Ukraine has won the Battle of Kyiv, has won the Battle of Kherson, has won the Battle of Kharkiv. Ukraine has defied Russia's expectations at every single turn. So I think that the West has now decided that the Ukrainians are not just losing slowly, they're actually capable of asserting their territorial integrity throughout most, if not all, of Ukraine. That will create a crisis in Russia, but the view now in the West is, well, that's Russia's problem. We can't influence that. If Putin is seen to fail in this operation, and he now can be seen to fail, it is viewed in the West, then he will have to deal with the consequences. That's not our responsibility. And so I think there's been a great hardening of opinion in the West, and far from being um, a, a, a sense of, of, of fatigue over the Ukraine war, at least the leaderships of the Western powers have remained remarkably united over more or less a year of this conflict.